Well, tonight's case from the text files is a bizarre murder mystery. One filled with intrigue, allegations of CIA connections. Some even have tried to tie it to the Kennedy assassination. It's the case of the Icebox Murders. June 23, 1965, Houston patrolman asked to check up on an elderly couple, find a house on Driscoll Street empty. But almost as an afterthought, they checked the kitchen. I opened up a refrigerator and seeing nothing but uh, meat stacked in the refrigerator. My partner standing next to me made the comment that he thought that uh, somebody had butchered, uh, butchered a hog. We didn't know it was a body until we got ready to close the refrigerator and we could see the uh, head down in the bottom of the uh, vegetable bin. Two bodies in the icebox, 81-year-old Fred Rogers, his 79-year-old wife, Edwina. But the third resident of the house, their son, 43-year-old Charles Rogers, then and now the only suspect was gone. I've never been able to understand how someone could commit an act like this and disappear off the face of the earth. This is 1815 Driscoll today. No one has lived here since the day of the murders. The house stayed vacant until 1972 when it was torn down, left a vacant lot. These condominiums were finished in the summer of 2000, but remain unsold. Investigators concluded the murders actually happened the Sunday before on Father's Day. Edwina, savagely beaten, shot execution style. Fred Rogers' head crushed with a hammer, eyes gouged out, emasculated, internal organs flushed down the sewer. But it's more than its grisly detail that makes it one of the most notorious crimes in Texas history. It's the shadowy character of Charles Rogers, whose keen mind and alleged government connections still baffle and intrigue. There is a chance that he may still be alive. Sergeant Jim Binford is lead investigator on a still open case. There's a wide range of theories, from satanic possession to evil government agents. The evil government agency theory bloomed in the early 1990s with a book called The Man on the Grassy Knoll. Okay. Charles Rogers was a covert agent of the CIA. He was recruited in 1956 here in Houston, at first as a contract agent. Then when he resigned from Shell, he became a full-time operative in the Latin American activities. The motive for killing his parents was to silence them because we believe that his mother at least found out that he had been involved in the conspiracy to assassinate the president a year and a half before. Most serious Kennedy scholars consider Phillips' book absolute baloney. It claims that Rogers was one of the so-called well-dressed tramps picked up on the day of the assassination and released. Their arrest records weren't found until 1992. Then the three tramps were identified and Charles Rogers was not one of them. We've never found any evidence, anything at all, that would substantiate Charles Rogers being involved with the CIA for years, Houston investigators Hugh Gardner and Martha Hughes have tracked the real Charles Rogers. People that knew him and had worked with him on projects have said that he was a very hard worker and very bright and very good at what he did. By all accounts, Rogers was a brilliant geologist with a knack for finding gas and oil and gold, a pilot who spoke seven languages and probably fled to Mexico and Central America. He had very powerful friends. He brought in the mines, he brought in the wells for people. And they continued to make money and so they were not going to give him up. Some of the people that he ran with during the late 50s, early 60s were contract workers for the CIA at one time or another. And we were a group of professional treasure hunters. A.M. Van Fossen is a legend in treasure hunting circles known widely as Gold Dust Ernie. He and Charles Rogers had mutual friends. Charles Rogers was a ham operator here in Houston. And of course, he was down in Mexico and South and Central America. So he talked to a lot of his people that he had connections with. This is the ham, his call numbers, and his name. Van Fossen found the ham radio plate after the Rogers house was torn down. He's fairly certain that Rogers and others he ran with did have CIA connections. Not in a permanent position, but in a uh, spot position. When they, they were going someplace and they would be contacted 
would you mind looking into such and such and keeping your eyes open for this or that? There's no shortage of unanswered questions, but they all begin with why the parents were murdered in the way they were. What would cause a person so much rage? Years and years and years of frustration and abuse. Hughes and Gardner claim that Fred Rogers, a bookie by trade, abused Charles as a child and stole from him as an adult, forging his name to sell two lots while Charles was out of the country. He had been swindled out of a considerable amount of money by his parents. Everybody that I know that knew the mother and the father said they were devious con artists. Everything that we've uncovered indicates that he actually plotted this crime probably for years. He was an angry man that uh, uh, never broke the umbrella of his parents, uh, apparently until this event. Not long ago, a Houston police artist used old photos to construct an image of what Charles Rogers might look like now. Some believe he was murdered a few years ago in Honduras by men working for him at a gold mine. But officially, Houston cops are still looking for him. Whether or not he killed his parents or he did not kill his parents, we'd like to know where you've been and what you've been doing. Next week, a classic UFO case from Lubbock, Texas, The Lubbock Lights.